Big Sister, the story of Ruth Wayne and her problems as a woman, as well as a nurse, a wife, and a mother. Today's episode in just a moment, after this message from our sponsor. For many years now, Ruth Wayne, Big Sister, has been helping others with their difficulties. Yet during the past few months, her own happiness has become clouded. She's on her way back to Glen Falls now, still feeling defeated because she was unable to get her husband John to come home with her. And as she looks out of the train window, she is thinking... Free country. Or is it just because I'm in a train moving, things always look different from the train. Just as they always look different afterwards. Mistakes. Standing out like road signs. Only somehow we always see them too late, after we've gone past them. Was it a mistake to go to New York? Would he have come back if I hadn't pressed him? He might have called, tried to call, not been able to reach me. Might have. Those awful words. It's all over with now. Done. Finished. Going home alone. Worn out, her eyes closed and her head sinks back against the dusty cushion. She sleeps. But even there in sleep, the same thoughts pursue her. The thought of what might have been. The same room in the same hotel she just left. The hands of the clock pointing again to the hour when she must leave. But this time... Come in. Oh, Porter, will you take these bags down? John. Yes, Ruth. What are you doing here? Well, you said the 3.30 train, didn't you? Well, yes. Well, it's not much time. Uh, never is, you know. I've got a cab downstairs. My bags are in it. I'll take yours down. You mean you're taking me to the station? To the station and back to Glen Falls. Or, or you're taking me. Well, it doesn't matter. We're going together. John, wait. Are you sure? Do you know what this means? Yes, Ruth, I know. Oh, John. John, what can I say? Well, then don't say anything. Not now. Just... Oh. Oh, my darling. Just let me hold you close like this for a minute. Oh. My... My dearest. So long, Ruth. So long. So much too long. But that's finished with now, John. Forever. You sure, Ruth? John, how can you ask that, even think it? Because it's something we both have thought of before this, something we may think of again. No, John, no, no, never, Be never. sure, Ruth, be sure, really sure. Well, I am, John, surer than I have ever been about anything in my life. Yes, you say that with your lips, but what does your heart say? Ask your heart, Ruth. Do you really want me back? Yes, John, I do. I swear. train bound for Glen Falls, dreaming. And John, lying on an unmade bed in a one-room apartment on Washington Square. Yes, who is it? Fred, John. Fred Davis. Oh, uh, uh yeah, come on in, uh, Fred. Uh, how are you, John? Oh, I'm just fine. Wonderful. How are you? You don't look it. I mean, well, well, that was an awful bad cold you had. Well, don't let the whiskers fool you. I'm just getting ready for next Christmas. Don't you think there might be a market for a Santa Claus with a real beard? <laughs> hey, that's good. You think so? I don't. Why don't you sit down, Fred? Oh, thanks. Yeah, it is pretty nice of me to ask you to sit down in your own apartment, isn't it? Oh, listen, John, if that's what's bothering you... Uh, look, I've told you a dozen times I was delighted to let you have it. Oh, I know. It's much more convenient for me to stay at the hotel anyway. I mean, well, I'm right there on the job all the time. Well, it's not what's bothering me, but it's why I asked you to come down here. Look... I'm uh, moving out, Fred, back to the hotel. If you if you still have a room for me, that is. So you can move back here. Well, why, John? I mean, well, what's all the rush? It's much more pleasant down here. And... Well, maybe that's why, Fred. Because I'm not interested in pleasant surroundings. And maybe because I... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Fred. I, I didn't mean to sound ungrateful because I really do 
appreciate everything you've done for me, really. All I've done for you, after everything you've done for me. Listen, if I live to be a hundred... Oh, okay, okay, Fred, let's forget it. Uh, I, uh, I don't know if you know it, but Mrs. Wayne went back to Glen Falls today. Yes, the desk clerk told me she was checking out. And, uh, well, I called her. I wanted to say goodbye. Oh? Well, what'd she say? Oh, nothing very much. Just that she was going back, but that you were going to stay here. Oh, I see. Yes, yes. Well, I, uh, told her I was awfully sorry I didn't know about it beforehand, so that we, uh, well, had a farewell party or something. <laughs> Well, she said that she probably would be coming back here sometime. Sometime? I see. Yeah, she's a pretty wonderful woman, John. I liked her an awful lot. Yes, yes, quite a few people do. No, nothing else, Fred? Nothing about me? Uh, 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 no, John. At least she... No, nothing else. I see. Uh, seen any good Shakespeare lately, Fred? Shakespeare? Hmm. Oh, you mean the performances in the park? No, no, not the Tempest. Julius Caesar. The fault, dear Brutus, lies not in our stars, but in ourselves. But we are under. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Well, don't just remember it, Fred. Have a hundred copies printed in bulletin size type. And any time you hear anyone complaining about bad breaks, tough luck, you just have one. There isn't any such thing as a bad break. You know that, don't you, Fred? Except the bad breaks we make for ourselves. Yeah, I... I suppose that's true, John. Suppose I'm telling it's true. Oh, I'm not arguing with you. It's just that... Now, look, John. Look, why all the rush about coming back to the hotel? Now, why don't you stay on here for another couple of days? Look, I really don't need the place. Honest. You you sure, Fred? Well, of course I'm sure. <sighs> well, maybe I will. For just another few days. Somehow, I don't know. I just don't seem to have the energy to go anywhere or do anything right now. We return to the story of Big Sister after this message from our sponsor. And now to Glen Falls, to the railroad station where the last train for New York is due in a few minutes and where Diane Carville is counting those minutes as a prisoner counts the days of his release. Diane! Uh, Diane! Father! Are you going somewhere? Yes, Dad, now that you mention it, I am. You uh, came home a little earlier than I thought you would. Too bad we could have avoided this. Oh, well, there's not going to be any scene, Diane. There was just one question I had to ask. Yes? Why are you going, Diane? Why? Why? That's really funny, knowing how I felt about him all these yes, years. Yes, I do know. The things you've said, anyway, that you love him, can't live without him. But there's something that you know, too, that John doesn't want you, never has and never will. Oh, you're wrong, Father. He just doesn't know he does. And you're going to tell him, eh? Yes. Of course I'm going to tell him. I waited, didn't I? I was going to go after him right after he left Glen Falls, but you asked me to wait, and I did. Well, Ruth had her chance, and what happened? You knew it was going to happen, and so did I. She's coming back without him, and I'm going. Yes, going to a man who's sick, completely disorganized and defeated. A man who's still married to someone else and who's no more interested in you than the man in the room. In heaven's name, Diane, are you my daughter? Haven't you any shred of dignity or pride? Oh, go on, Dad. There's a lot more. Say it. I'm a fool. I'm an ingrate. I'm running out on you when you need me most. I'm hurting you, Ruth, as well as myself and John. Now, just stand there. Say it. You really would like me to, wouldn't you? You'd like me to hurt you really badly the way you're hurting me. And then we'd be all square and you could forget about it. And just think about yourself and John. But I'm not going to say any more, Diane. And I'm sorry I said what I did. But if you do go through with this, go to him, it will be my fault. Because in some way I failed as a father. Will you stop that? It's not your fault. No, it's not. It's... 
You almost had me there for a minute. Did I? I don't think so. And I didn't think I really could stop you. But I had to try. Yes, I suppose you did. But it's no good, eh? No good. Even though you know what it's going to mean as far as Ruth and I are concerned, the two of us in the same office, knowing that you're in New York with John, even though you know he doesn't love you. Dad, listen. I know John better than anyone else in the world. Yes, even better than Ruth. Because he's like me, just like me, in more ways than you realize. Out of tune, out of step with the whole world. No, he doesn't love me. He doesn't even want me now. But he will. You can tell that to Ruth. He will. Standing there looking at Diane, Dr. Carvel strives desperately to find something else to say, something that may touch this daughter of his. But before he can find the words, the train thunders to the station and stops. And as Diane moves toward it, he knows, as he has known all along, that it is useless. And now, this message from our sponsor. Listen tomorrow on the station to Big Sister. This has been a production of Nana Radio. Howard Petrie speaking.